Side. This is a clip of one shot headshot when it doesn't irritate oh, me. IQ. Okay, who did I kill then? This is a clip of one shot headshot when it does irritate me. Down. Close right, close right, Greg. Reloading. We got that. Let's go. In study, in study, in study. Study window. Capital flaming. Still on the backside. Now, aside from the reload canceling and the fact that this hip fire is this tight with an LMG. Even if I whiff the pre-fire, I should be able to correct around the corner because this person is reloading with an LMG. Now, I know that examples like this often get maligned as skill issue, just hit the head forehead. And that's the problem with talking about gun balancing in this game. That right oh, there. Yes, theoretically, we could give an operator the worst gun in Rainbow Six Siege and we could go, oh, well, there's one shot headshot. So anytime that player is at a disadvantage, we can blame the player and say, well, they should have just hit the head. Then it wouldn't have happened. But we literally don't do that, do we? We pick and choose which guns we give to certain operators based off of their loadouts, their armor rating. This logic is flawed and I think it's holding the game back. And I'm gonna explain why. But first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Keeps. I've been working with Keeps for a while now. Keeps is a service that helps men keep their hair. Keeps will get you in touch with somebody who can see what's going on in the top of your head and give you a personalized treatment plan to deal with your unique hair needs. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they reach age 35. So you're not alone, and Keeps has an extensive amount of experience dealing with this sort of thing. You have a network of medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists that you can hit up around the clock. Everything delivered to your door, and you can do it all from the comfort of your computer desk. Keeps also has shampoos and conditioners that you can use to treat the hair that you already have on the top of your head. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off of your first order, go to keeps.com slash Gregor or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Gregor for 50% off. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. They've been a supporter of the channel for a long time and I really appreciate it. Great people, great product. Check them out. You might think that one-shot headshot modifies the game only in terms of mechanical aim, but it also modifies other aspects of player behavior besides just hitting that target. An often underrated aspect about siege gunfighting is learning how to position yourself. I'd probably say I lose more gunfights from bad positioning than I do bad aim. But explaining this concept to new players can be very difficult. Just getting to a point where you have good mechanical aim can be hard enough. But what does positioning have to do with one-shot headshot? It seems like an aim-based mechanic more than anything else. Some people claim that one-shot headshot rewards better mechanical aim. I think it depends on the gunfight. MP5 versus 5.56? Sure. MP5 versus Twitch F2? I mean, not really. It used to be, but I don't think that's the case anymore. How come? Well, the balance philosophy for Siege since 2015 was this. A defender has to play a positioning game where the attackers can swing more aggressively with hard-hitting assault rifles that don't require them to aim for the head as much. Defenders kind of have to wait and pounce on their prey with intel and sound cues. But for any attacker with LMGs and even many assault rifles, this is not true. If you have a weapon with high damage, high fire rate, and not much recoil, you have a perfect weapon in Rainbow Six Siege. You have zero downsides in terms of your gunfighting. And if you have zero downsides with your gunfighting, you have zero downsides with your ability to take engagements. You can position yourself however you want. Defenders can't. A defending player with an MP5 can be a more mechanically skilled player than a Finca boosted LMG player. But a Finca boosted LMG player only has to hit Malusi three times in the chest. Malusi has to hit the head, plain and simple. If she whiffs with body shots, quote unquote, the Finca will win that engagement every single time. So in order to beat the Finca player, Malusi cannot make a single mistake with her positioning or noise output. Finca doesn't care. She can make a bunch of noise, she can wide swing with no cover, and when she gets a beat on your position, she can spray every single one of the positions your head can jut out from. And even then, she doesn't have to hit the head. This is part of my problem with the current state of siege gunfighting. Finca doesn't really have to hit the head, but she also has the added benefit of being able to win by hitting the head. The argument that one-shot headshot evens the gunfight dynamic on MP5 versus Finca LMG is flawed. Because Finca can hit a head too. Twitch can hit a head too. And in a lot of cases, they can have an easier time with it with higher zoom optics. That's what makes a gun like Finca's gun so strong. Again, I'm not being hyperbolic. High damage output plus decent rate of fire plus no recoil means no downsides. Your gun in Siege is perfect. We don't tolerate perfect gadgetry in Rainbow Six Siege and often tweak it to create an emphasis on working together. None of these hard breachers can open the wall by themselves, not even Maverick. He still needs a buddy to buck or sludge it open if he tricks it. And making a big circle to vault through, well, there's plenty of ways to contest that. It leaves him very vulnerable. 
Why is perfect weaponry any more acceptable in Siege? Is the game gadget and team play based, or is it gunplay based? Don't get me wrong, I don't think Siege is a truly gunplay based game. There are lots of things besides aiming that separate a good player from a bad one. But that's for when we compare Siege to other shooters. Right now, in the context of Siege's history, the movement is slower than ever, but the game still feels like Call of Duty. Why? That doesn't make sense. It's because Siege has a contradictory gameplay loop. Games with fast time to kill like Siege usually go down a tactical route, with slower movement and handling with a ton of recoil. What made Siege unique was the fast time to kill and snappy handling. It meant that a 1v4 wasn't the end of the world, because if you could isolate your ones and win each of those gunfights, you could pull it off. Now with the sheer amount of gadgetry on the board, pulling off an attacking 1v4 is almost impossible unless the enemy team fucks up or the guy in the driver's seat is considerably skilled. Where's the democratization of gunfights there? His enemies can hit a headshot too. Angled grip was nerfed as well. The only caveat that the defenders often had to out-aim their slower assault rifle wielding counterparts was to outmaneuver them with a well-timed swing. Angled grip helped with this a great bit and the SMGs had faster handling as a result. It gave an SMG wielding defender more flexibility without giving them the act of aiming and hitting the target for free. You still had to hit the head, but you had another way to help do so. This is part of the reason SMGs in CSGO have less movement accuracy penalties. Because without them, there would be no point in using them. You'd just save for a rifle the next round every single time. The purpose of less movement penalty with SMGs in CSGO is to even the playing field not completely, but just enough where an SMG user can outfight their opponent with a good positioning play. If they aren't punished by the enemy with flashes or mollies, the SMG can go for a big swing and get a pick or two. It's not all just about hitting a shot. Clearly the reason that I win this engagement is because I'm cracked bolo nutty, not because I have an F2 and my opponent has an MP5. And in addition to angled grip getting nerfed, lots of defenders have had their weapons dumpstered while attackers can roam free with Terminator laser cannons. Jaeger's gun was nerfed four times, but the necessity of Jaeger ADSs was still evident, while making his gunfights a pain in the ass. Somebody has to bring him, and they'll hate it the entire time, but if you want to win, you gotta suck it up and quit complaining. Do the right thing. Now this is appropriate in competitive or professional play, but for everybody else, most people don't want to do the right thing. Most people just want to have fun shooting gun in the shooter game. Once again, we arrive at this polarization of Siege's community where there's no middle ground. You either have to do big chungus LMG mounted and loaded, or you have to treat every game like you're qualifying for the invitational. And more illogically, why do my enemies get to play the fun shooter game while my ass has to play Crouching Tiger Hidden Headshot just to have a fighting chance. They're playing the correct way with meta-viable operators that can have fun while gunning, and I'm playing the correct way with guns that make every engagement I take feel fucking miserable. In my opinion, it's not one-shot headshot that makes the MP5 or the P90 good. It's what makes them serviceable. And I don't mean, oh, you know, they're not great, but they get the job done. I mean, it makes them serviceable. You can use them. They won't get in your way, unless you whiff and hit the body, which, it's hilarious that hitting the target but not in the head is considered a whiff at all. But in Siege, it is. That's because there's no penalty for getting hit in the chest or arms in Siege. Yeah, I know your hearing goes down, your screen gets a little discolored, but you actually get more information from getting not shot in the head with firing indicators. In a roundabout way, the player getting shot in the arm or chest gets rewarded with information as a result of getting shot in the arm or chest as a result of positioning themselves badly and making themselves into a target. You can let me know in the comments if this has happened to you. It's definitely happened to me. I've been quote unquote corrected for my habit of tap firing in this game. Now tap firing meaning that I fire in short bursts to ensure that my spray doesn't go crazy. And if it's on a pixel angle or something, I really want to make sure that I hit the head. I don't just want to rely on the recoil to maybe luckily get me the head. I get criticized for that. The argument, as far as I understand it, is that a competitively sound player can control that recoil bloom diamond well enough that the randomness of the spread will be able to hit a headshot more than likely. So mathematically, you're supposed to just run around and mouse one. That is not fucking tactical. That is not tactical realism like people like to complain about to me. That sounds like a fucking arcade game. You know what taking your time and firing in short, accurate bursts is called in other uh, FPS games? No, I didn't, I didn't see it's called playing the game correctly. Yeah, connector. Window, window. Damn, ass. Coming out of ass. My weapon. I know, I know. Greg, this is an apples to oranges comparison. CSGO and Siege aren't the same. 
But geez, man, when I come back from another game like CS or Val, or even Apex, and I come back to Siege, and I just kind of, like, run around with this giant laser beam that, you know, I can turn on and off coming out of my head, if it weren't for the gadget interactions, the destructibility, and the ability to reinforce stuff, strat, set up, executes, droning, all of that, that's what makes Siege to me. I think that going in this slower, more deliberate direction has alienated more people than anything else. But I've said this so many times, Ubisoft is in charge and I'm not. If Ubisoft wants to make a decision with the approach that they want for this game, they need to pivot to one or the other. They can't do both at the same time, because right now the game basically reflects elements of two different types of games, and it's doing both of those kind of okay, but it's not committing to one or the other. I'm kind of over the uniqueness and the novelty argument. Novelty for the sake of novelty doesn't make something good. You have to justify it within the context that it's presented. Ryan Johnson moment. The argument that Siege is unique because of one-shot headshot means nothing to me. North Korea is unique. Doesn't mean I want to live there. One-shot headshot in other games is balanced out by a ton of other things. In CSGO, you must hit that shot first. If you miss, you have to hit a spray pattern. Or wait for the gun to reset and start all over. Oh, and you can't move. In Call of Duty, headshot kills are not instant, except with a few guns, and only provide additional damage. Same thing in Apex, and the gun that is capable of one-shot downing has a considerably low fire rate, and it's a power weapon. Don't get me wrong, there used to be a time where I loved one-shot headshot. I think Siege benefited from one-shot headshot at the time of its release, and maybe a couple years afterward. But so far, every other aspect of Siege's gunfighting has been modified through the way that you approach the game in terms of how you can position yourself and move around. Guns have had recoil added, the way visual recoil was calculated was changed, ADS times and lean speed has been slowed. The only thing that hasn't been changed has been the time to kill and one-shot headshot. I think it's time we at least take a look at it.